Hey everybody, it's Mark. It is October 16th, 2013. Colorado Sasquatch Research. Okay, uh, this is actually day three that I have been in an area where I promised, looking from the other side of the canyon, that I would come over here to investigate some things that I saw on the other side. Uh, for the past three days, it has been cold, and uh, I wait, uh, braved the uh, weather, the 32 degrees, to come out here. And uh, I found a brand new nest, which I'm going to classify as nest number four. Now, this nest is uh, humongous. Whoever's been uh, monitoring my Facebook page has seen the uh, stills of, uh, of the nest. Uh, as well as I found some clumps of hair, which now I believe probably belong to a coyote. They got into it with a porcupine and I'll show you the porcupine needles all over this uh, game trail up here that I found he just let loose on whatever he attacked so but anyways I'm back out here again because I haven't been happy with uh, the film that's been going on uh, so you know I don't put out I don't like to put out junk so you know I'm trying to document the evidence that I'm finding and this nest uh, the best that I can. Now the reason I'm talking kind of quietly is because yesterday evening when I left here, now I don't know if this is known as what some people call zapping, but I got the creeps. I mean the creeps. It felt like an electrical sensation ran up and down my spine and made the neck on my hair stand up. And <clears throat> if you've ever felt that feeling, it's I guess you could say that it's like being watched, but somebody was projecting at me So somebody was watching me and I thought I heard something up in this huge cave over here that I found There's two huge caves right by this nest and as I was leaving yesterday the nest after I had you know done some filming and taking pictures I'm telling you that is the that's called getting creeped out. I was creeped. So whoever it was was here and they were shadowing and watching me. So I'm just been kind of moving real slow coming back in this morning into this area cuz I want to uh um you know, I want to I want to see if I can catch them off guard. That probably isn't going to happen, but this nest and these caves on this side over here are everything I expected. Um, there's a lot of wildlife over here too, coyotes and stuff, because I wasn't sure what I had. I was thinking maybe it was a Bigfoot that tried to kill a porcupine and the porcupine shot all his ammo all over the place. But the, the hair samples that I did find, the five clumps that I uh, posted on my Facebook page, do in fact uh, <clears throat> match a uh, a coyote so uh thanks to uh, jeff yellick of uh, sir uh for pointing that out that it's it's coyote hair and i mean it could be a bigfoot but you know it's process of narrowing animals that that are going to be frequented in the area and uh so it uh it most likely is coyote hair but I'm still going to have it tested and uh, sent off just to confirm so that I know. Um, because I found five clumps inside uh, this huge nest where I'm going to right now. So I started filming now. Okay, now, as I was leaving yesterday, see this cave over here? I heard something maybe up along the wall, you know, because I chose to work along the canyon wall because, you know, per history, that's what they do on the other side of the canyon. I found the prints, you know, they run along the wall and they, they do utilize these caves. And uh, so anyways, I heard something as I was leaving and uh, right about right here, I mean, I could have, I could swear he's in there. And I tell you what, that is the only way to describe that feeling, is getting creeped out. It's like a, a young child walking into a dark 
dark room. I mean, the, the, the hair on your neck just stands up and you can feel it move up your spine. I mean, it is a trip. I usually have never felt that way when they're around. So he was projecting at me. I may have woke him up and he may have not been too happy with me. So I'm not making a lot of noise today, but that cave in there goes into the mountain pretty dang deep. So I'm just bypassing him kind of quietly as I make my way to the nest. Now as we get over to this nest, it, um, I'm gonna point out how well hidden it is. Oh, see, I heard something again. some light talking to maybe they may be confused because I told him yesterday I wouldn't be coming back I thought today it was gonna be real snowy I'm a little on edge cuz because this nest was made by a Bigfoot. And when, and when I point out why and how, there's not gonna be any question. The skeptics aren't gonna have anything to say about this nest. This, this one is impressive. The logs, some of the logs that have been laid to create this structure gotta weigh 2,000 pounds. They're huge logs. Okay, now I was coming up this game trail here and uh, I started noticing um, little clumps of white hair that I thought maybe belonged to a deer at first. And um, see, there's porcupine needles all over the ground. See him? He let loose on something. But all through here, I found him, and then I found him in the nest. Now. Here, look, there's still hair here on the ground. See, it's got porcupine needles in it. So, you know, we're thinking maybe coyote, but it's hard to, who knows? Something got into it with uh, this porcupine, and he just let loose. I mean, there's hundreds of these little spines everywhere. And I came up here. And there's more, see? Oh, more hair too. I didn't even see this. I have five good, uh, five good clumps. So, like I said, I don't need to continue to take more and more. I have a handful. But boy, that porcupine really let loose. Um, so anyways, that's what I was looking at. And then, you know, I started looking up here and I could see some what appears to be maybe attempted nests. And it gets really tough. You know, I'll give you a 360 view here. Now I'm on a hill. There's little critters moving around. I've already seen a couple rabbits. But, uh,. If you look down, see it's like on a hill. This nest is completely hidden. It's like anything I've ever seen before because it was strategically placed to be hidden from anybody finding it. You know, if you have a hiker that comes through here, they're gonna do what I'm gonna do and they're gonna try and work the canyon wall maybe as close as they can to it and maybe find a game trail like this that they can stick on. They're not going to go traipsing through all this, this willow brush down here like this. It's just too thick and it's messy and you can get ticks all over you in the summer. But uh, something caught my eye. So I said, I'm going to go down there and look. And lo and behold, I ran across this nest. So I'm just about there. Now, like I said, there is a humongous cave right down here and I didn't bring a flashlight but I, I'm gonna be inspecting it it goes into the earth 
pretty darn deep under a boulder. I mean, uh, it, it's like a room. It's a huge black room in there. I don't know how deep it is, but it looks like you could stand up in it. But it's just adjacent. See, there it is down there. Now it's just adjacent to this nest. So I'm going to have to alert if one of the foots is over here, let them know I'm here because I don't want to, or an animal. I don't want a confrontation with. Oh shit. <sighs> Something is moving behind me. I can hear him. Whoop! Stayama. Nahailio. She a chukima? Man, I hope that's a deer. I really hope it's a deer. Hey, buddy, it's me, Mark. Are you up there? I just came to visit. I won't be long. And then I'll leave for the day. I apologize if you feel I'm intruding. I didn't mean to intrude. I just wanted to come for a little while. I lost something up here yesterday. So I just came back to get it. What the hell is that? So I'm just gonna take a look for it and then I'll leave. I'm not really freaked out. I'm not getting that zapped feeling, but uh, again, I gotta be so careful. See, there's the nest down there. Completely hidden. Look at all the, how thick this is. I mean, I am in no trail, nothing. It is so tough. But anyways, there's this cave right over here, which, which I gotta be so careful because I really don't want to upset my friends here. I'm in a bad position. Look at this cave. It goes into the earth. So, this cave, completely hidden under this massive boulder, just goes into the earth. Now, I didn't see this originally when I found the nest. I uh, I just happened to see a whole bunch of wood gathered. It looked like a tree had just fallen, you know? And uh, so I didn't think too much of it, you know? I just, it's just, it's, so I went down to investigate it and uh, Lo oh, and behold, and pardon the camera work, I'm kind of hung up here. It's really tough to get down here. I ran into the biggest nest I've ever found yet to date. It's kind of tough. Now, hi, Leo. Something I gotta touch on or say is I am a, I am a professional survivalist. Okay, I'm a raw. I've been trading raw and how to survive out here in the woods. I mean, I could I could live out here with them for years on end, uh, no problem at all. And I couldn't do this. I'm sorry. Now the logs is that you're looking at here are huge. To get a good perspective, I'm going to walk all the way around it, giving you views from every side. See, this isn't natural. 
This is nesting. This is huge too. Um, let me climb up on this boulder so we can get a, an overview from the roof. <sighs> See, look at the logs. This is the roof of a massive, massive undertaking. Some of these logs, the big ones especially, got to weigh 2,000 pounds. And again, no signs of saw or axe. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a huge tree. Here's the top, see? And what this does is you have this one gigantic log tree that has fallen. And it goes way back there. which already fell across this pit. This under, again, you know, you have boulders and they make a little small pit cave. And then it was added to, I mean, in to, to totally cloak it. It's uh, absolutely beautiful. So, but as you can see, I'm completely surrounded in all directions. Um, and hidden this is this is total bigfoot there's the inside i'll show you the inside here in a minute i lost my watch up here so that's another reason why i came up here today <laughs> oh wow oh, i don't want to fall through the roof there oh. okay i think i lost it over here because i was took a break over here that I don't see it now. They probably heard it beeping at the, in the night and either they or an animal came and got it. Probably took it. <laughs> I had the alarm set off. It beeps hourly. So it was probably going off here in the morning and they said, what is that? Let's see, this is a back entrance. Just amazing. I can hear the ranger rolling around already this morning. <clears throat> but uh, an incredible, incredible piece of architecture. Oh man, I've got animals and stuff moving around. See, and look, there's another cave. There's like this is like the perfect place. So say, people have been saying or making comments in some of the Bigfoot groups, I don't understand why they need to do this. Well, for one, this is the Rocky Mountains, okay? It's going to get 20 below out here, fur covered or not. Bigfoots do not just say, well, I'm going to sleep here for the night. You know, there's just no way. I don't care how much fur you have. The animals freeze to death in the middle of winter. So... You know, building stuff like this is, uh, it's total hominin behavior. And I don't agree with those that say they're animals and that they're not smart enough or intelligent enough to, to do this. They're full of crap, too. Most of the people that are skeptics, anyways. I mean, you're looking at, uh, an incredible piece of architecture here that was, uh, Not done by humans. All right, let me get off this thing now. Try not to fall through the roof. And it, it's placed so that it is really tough to move around. Yeah, you can't just like, you know, walk right up on this. The other nests, well, hidden, they're not as hidden as this. This is uh, strategically placed in the uh, in the brush, in the thick, for total concealment. So, coming down here. Okay, something messed with my apples. They left two and took one. All right, a 
another thing that I need to let you know. I'm going to cut this segment a little short and have small, shorter segments. It's just taking too long. I just don't have the time to sit all day and upload a, uh, a video that long. So I'm trying to cram these with information and data as much as possible. But here you go. Look at this log here, see this? This one? Humongous log. There is no buddy living out here. There are no survivalists. Um, there is no homeless guy because I don't see any um, trash. You know, there's no signs of humans at all. No pop cans, no lighters, no matches. Uh, nothing that... Uh, you know, squatters leave. Of course, it depends on where you live. Some squatters in some states are worse than others. And they also don't leave symbology inside their structures. See, there's a couple little pit caves in here, inside the structure. And then if you, you, know, you just climb up these rocks, there's a couple more, see? See that over there? I mean, that could be blocked off. Look at that. This is the inside. No signs of fire. This is uh, Bigfoot. Now, yes, I'm gonna let, you know, the, the moron skeptics that have infiltrated the Bigfoot community groups on Facebook, you know, debate whatever they want and go on and on and on. I, I don't have time for the drama. If you're not out here and you don't see this, this is a Sasquatch activity, not human. And again, like I said, as a trained survivalist, this isn't going to sustain a human, especially in a roll situation, which I train for. You know, this is my playground. This is where I train. I live out here. This is like my backyard. So, um, you know, I train out here, but, uh, you know, in the middle of winter, this isn't going to sustain me. And then, you know, if you take a, a worst case scenario where I'm hiding from troops, you know, like an invading 10 million Chinese man army, uh, they're going to use flares. So this isn't going to give you cover from the air, uh, from planes or helicopters that have a flare. They won't send infantry into this deep brush, but, you know, it, unless they had to come and get you. But, uh, so it's, 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 you know, it, it is Sasquatch activity. And I, I'm going to say 110% on that. Now let's go over here real quick, because before I finish the segment, I just want to look. See, I left a whole bunch of apples. So they left two. There we go, see? One, two there were several of them so they've been picking at it but they didn't really uh chances are that's an animal see see the little tiny bites so maybe you know they don't care for that and then if you come down here see you can see there's the uh Other side of the canyon. So 
So I haven't ventured very far beyond finding this nest. This is uh, basically where I've stopped. And if you come down here, downhill, oh, what is it? See, I can hear all kinds of little critters take off as I crunch around. See, I haven't even ventured down here really away from it. See, I'm like in this open, nice little open area where you can sit. And see, see, you can't even see the nest now. I've only feet away from it and you can't see it. There's the tree, there's the lot, see? That, that whole piece of this trees have been used to put that nest together. Gigantic, massive trees. You can see something's laid here. See, and that's the the backside. This is the tree that makes up that uh, the main base to build that nest around. Okay, so we're going to kill this segment right now, and we're going to venture a little further just to see what we find because it's still nice and early and it's still warming up. So that's going to be segment one for uh, October 16th.